Hey guys, welcome to another video. Thanks for joining me today. Today, I'm going to do an initial unboxing and first run impression video on a shoe that's really probably not up my alley for the most part. Uh, pretty much just because of one fact. But um, I'm going to do this on the Brooks Glycerin 21 Stealth Fit. Uh, I was actually given these shoes by Brooks, thank you Brooks, uh, at the running event in Austin. Um, I used to, Brooks makes really good running shoes. I used to run in them quite a bit. Uh, my all-time favorites were probably the Green Silence that they sold uh, 13, 14 years ago. And uh, I ran a lot in the Brooks launch. However, I made a transition probably 12, 13 years ago to low drop shoes and Brooks made very few low drop shoes. So the one thing about these shoes that probably puts them not up my alley is they are still a 10 millimeter heel to toe drop and I pretty well stick to low drop. I stick to six millimeters and under. So, so that'll be a change a little bit different for me. Uh, that being said, I, I'm still excited to try these out and see what Brooks now has uh, going for them. We sell a lot of Brooks shoes in the running store I work in, and uh, they are a very good, good quality shoe. One of the things I love about them is their outsoles, or they have good thick rubber that's uh, very durable, lasts a long time. This uses their DNA Loft uh, version three. It's a nitrogen injected foam, so they should be fairly bouncy, and uh, the glycerin is supposed to be one of their softer shoes. I know. I don't have the exact uh, measurements on stack height. I did read somewhere that it's 28 in the heel and 18 in the forefoot, but it actually looks a little high, bit higher than that, so I'm not exactly sure. Uh, coming in with this with this uh, midsole and the Stealth Fit upper, which is a soft knit upper, it, it has lost some weight, so it's only like a 9.3 ounce shoe in a men's size nine. Uh, I measured in my men's size 11 and a half and it actually so I'm getting 10.05 it's just over 10 ounces but that's really not a big increase when you go from men's size 9 to a men's size 11 and a half it's going up a little over half uh, 7 tenths of an ounce so that's very common uh, anyway I'm looking forward to getting these on my feet I've not really been a huge fan of knit uppers in the past, but this one seems thin enough that it uh, and stretchy enough that it should be very comfortable. I actually like the comfort of knit uppers. I just don't think they breathe real well. But this one seems thin enough that I think it's still going to breathe pretty well. And you, you, there are quite a few holes up in the front and through the tongue that should help uh, get some airflow in there. Um, Anyway, I'm going to give them on, uh, get them on foot, go for a run, and then give, uh, give you my first run impressions. So I finished my first short run in the Glycerin 21 Stealth Fit. Uh, so I just wanted to give my thoughts. First off, I'm finding them to be very comfortable shoes, no doubt about it. Um, 
that stretchy knit upper is very comfortable as someone that is coming from uh, running most of my miles in ultra and topo I actually find the fit pretty tight uh, in a lot of ways but it's not uncomfortable at all especially with the stretchiness of the knit so uh, from a comfort stand standpoint I'd say very good uh, the ride of the midsole foam it's uh, very nice and cushioned with a little bit of firmness I would actually say it has some responsiveness uh, very nice midsole For me, they will probably not be a shoe that I'll add to my rotation that I'll run in a lot. I'll, I'll definitely run some more miles in them because they're very comfortable and I'm enjoying them. However, for me, uh, I transitioned several years ago to low drop shoes. I go between zero and six millimeter drop and these have a 10 millimeter drop. And whereas it wasn't uncomfortable running in the 10 millimeter drop, I found that I had to really concentrate or I started heel striking more, uh, more forcefully. I heel strike some anyway. But uh, the reason I switched to, to low drop shoes to begin with is I thought it was the heel strike, but it was more that I was heel striking very hard and, and over striding, and I was getting injured a lot. And I, I, it concerns me that if I run a lot in high drop shoes, I'll go back to that. And uh, I don't want to go back to getting injured all the time. So uh, I will limit my use. That being said, uh, for people that are running in high drop shoes and don't have injury issues, there's no reason to change. Um, for me, it was just uh, something I needed to do for myself to keep, keep myself uh, from having quite as many repetitive stress injuries. Anyway, uh, that's probably why I will not switch to them for a lot of mileage, but I do like the shoes. I do think they're quality made. I think they're comfortable. Um, I won't have any trouble recommending it to people that don't mind a higher drop shoe. And with that being said, I'm, it makes me that much more excited about some of the uh, Brooks offerings that they've come out with recently that have a little bit lower drop. Like I just got the a returned pair that came back to the store of the Brooks Catamount 2, which is a trail shoe with a six millimeter drop. Uh, so I'm going to be trying that out very soon. I'm looking forward to it. And I'm also very intrigued by, they just came out with the Ghost Max, uh, a variation on their Ghost that has a lot higher stack height. But they've also put a six millimeter drop in that so uh, i'm very intrigued by that shoe and will probably give it a try so anyway uh those are my thoughts on the shoes i think they're very good quality i don't think they're what are going to work for me but uh that's about all i got for today if you found the video interesting, please consider hitting the thumbs up, the like button. If you're interested in any more of my content, please consider subscribing to my channel. And other than that, I hope you're having a wonderful day. And keep moving!